Adam Kissinger, who spent 12 years as a Republican representing the 16th Congressional District in Illinois, but did not seek re-election in 2022, made his farewell address recently, taking time to blast Republicans for no longer being the party of liberty and self-government, but now being the party of lies and deceit. Though so Kissinger was one of those representatives who was very little known of until around 2016 when Trump was elected, and then around 2018, he started becoming very critical of Trump, which of course a lot of Republicans hated, so he received a lot of backlash. So that could be one of the main reasons he decided to not seek re-election in 2022. Perhaps he thought that he might have lost the primary since we had Trump and other Republicans uh, rallying against people who decided to impeach Trump. So for example, Liz Cheney lost her primary to another Republican candidate by a wide margin just because Cheney decided to impeach Trump. So a lot of the candidates who were very outspoken against Trump and even voted to impeach him ended up actually losing their primary and suffering some pretty fatal consequences. Gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Kingsinger, for 30 minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's with great pride that I rise today, and for the next few minutes, I'd like to reflect on my 12 years serving this body. I knew from a young age that I wanted to serve our nation. While I was still in college, I was elected to the McLean County Board, the youngest person ever to do so. In 2003, I was commissioned in the Air Force, a responsibility that I took very seriously and one I still serve to this day. Returning from Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, I ran for Congress and I won. Well, at the time, I, I didn't have a family. I promised to myself to leave them a better country than the one that I inherited. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, I cannot in good conscience say that I have done that. When preparing this speech, I knew that reflecting on our country's past would be the guiding light to our destiny. What made the experiment of our great nation so remarkable was that the American people put their faith in their fellow citizens to tell the truth and to make difficult choices. We've taken these ideals for granted for far too long. Instead of using our platform to advance the well-being of our nation, and our people, we've turned this institution into an echo chamber of lies. Coming home from war, I truly believe that American democracy was infallible. How could a nation that fought a civil war for the freedom of all, a nation that vanquished fascism and communism in Europe, how could it falter? How could we stand atop Mount Everest only to decide that we prepare to fight in the mud? I have sworn an oath both in uniform and in this office to protect this nation and its constitution. While overseas, I witnessed the dangers that radicalization of beliefs can have on people in Iraq and Afghanistan. Sadly, since coming to Congress, I've watched how Republicans and Democrats have weaponized fear in much the same way. We must not abandon our values or our beliefs in the U.S. Constitution. We all swore an oath in this very chamber to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, not a political party and not a single man. Let us renew this belief while casting out those who take the unprecedented call to abolish this sacred document. Just as Lady Justice looks upon the Constitution and the old Supreme Court, one floor, below, one floor below us, we must remove the blindfold of politics and govern for all Americans when we're executing our duties. Where Republicans once believed that limited government meant lower taxes and more autonomy, today limited government means inciting violence against government officials. Following the tragic Oklahoma City bombing, Former President George H.W. Bush publicly refuted those who used fear to gain support. In stark contrast, our leaders today belittle and in some cases justify attacks on the U.S. Capitol as, quote, legitimate political discourse. The once great party of Lincoln, Roosevelt, and Reagan has turned its back on the ideals of liberty and self-governance. Instead, it has embraced lies and deceit. The Republican Party used to believe in a big tent, which welcomed the tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. 
Now, we shelter the ignorant, the racist, who only stoke anger and hatred to those who are different than us. Our constituents voted us in based on our beliefs, but we cannot use our faith as a sword and a shield while ignoring the fact that we are all children of God, that we are all Americans. To my Democratic colleagues, you must too bear the burden of our failures. Many of you have asked me, where are all the good Republicans? Over the past two years, Democratic leadership had the opportunity to stand above the fray. Instead, they poured millions of dollars into the campaigns of MAGA Republicans, the same candidates President Biden called a national security threat to ensure these good Republicans did not make it out of their respective primaries. This is no longer politics as usual. This is not a game. If you keep stoking the fire, you can't point the fingers when our great experiment goes up in flames. Unfortunately, there are too few Republicans and Democrats that have the spines to stand up and put country over party. This is not how our founding fathers intended for our democracy to function because, Mr. Speaker, our democracy is not functioning. When one party's megaphone echoes calls for a civil war, and the other tacitly and in some cases openly supports it, then we are clearly lost, Mr. Speaker. Much like the Titanic on its maiden voyage, if Republicans and Democrats don't urgently course correct, I fear we will hit the iceberg right in front of us. While our politics are more divided now than any time over the past 160 years, we're often reminded of the magic of America at its best. Following tragedies like the Boston Marathon bombing or Hurricane Sandy and Harvey, Americans from all walks of life banded together to support their neighbors, regardless of their political affiliation. Through hardship, hope reigns. And with this in mind, we cannot allow the loudest voice in the room to become the voice of reason. While we in recent years have failed our constituents, there have been times where we have come together to find common sense solutions to some of the pressing challenges of our times. As a nation, we achieved more when we worked together. Americans deserve a democracy that values truthful leaders and real dialogue between our parties. It is my belief that we have to put aside our differences and remember that the nation itself will only survive if the people have faith in one another. Unfortunately, we now live in a world where lies trump truth, where democracy is being challenged by authoritarianism. If we, America's elected leaders, do not search within ourselves for a way out, I fear that this great experiment will fall into the ash heap of history. To millions of Americans looking for solutions, not lies, it is up to us to ensure that this ship does not sink. We're being challenged at home and abroad. We must not crumble under the gravity of this moment. So many men and women around the world would die and have died trying to achieve what we have in the United States. So many of America's sons and daughters, many of whom were my friend, ha friends, have died protecting it. As we continue to navigate a challenging and changing world, we must remember the past. Whenever the United States turns its back on humanity, we all suffer the consequences. Western appeasement of Hitler not only led to the Second World War, but also the genocide of millions of Jews across Europe. Believing that we could leave Europe destroyed, we could leave Europe destroyed following the demise of Nazi Germany only emboldened communist Russia to repress the Eastern continent for nearly five decades. Only through continued American engagement did we defeat communism and liberate our European allies to enjoy their God-given freedoms. Unfortunately, we once again retreated from the world, thinking that no one would challenge the sole superpower. Our hubris, hubris left a window for 19 men armed with box cutters to murder 2,996 Americans here at home. History has proven that American isolation from the world affairs is dangerous. Over the years, I've been privileged to lead the effort on supporting American leadership in a world drowning in faux strongmen, advocating for the rights of Syrian men, women, and children to live without fear of Assad's death squads 
shouldn't be political. That's just simply the right thing to do. Advocating for stronger American assistance in Ukraine to counter Putin's illegal invasion shouldn't be political. That's just the right thing to do. By supporting those who believe in freedom, we advance the interests of the American people. Should this Congress or any future Congress decide to turn their back on our alliances and commitments, it will do nothing but embolden our adversaries. None more than the Chinese Communist Party. It is all but certain that China is gauging their tolerance for pain based on our response to Ukraine. And should we fail to support our allies in Kyiv, China will unleash their own imperial aspiration across the region. Had I known that standing up for truth would cost me my job, friendships, and even my personal security, I would, without hesitation, do it all over again. I can rest easy at night knowing that I fulfilled my oath to the office. I know many in this institution cannot do the same. Some of my most rewarding and memorable accomplishments in Congress have come from working to solve issues directly impacting the 16th District and Illinois as a whole. Whether it was fighting the opioid epidemic or it was keeping nuclear power plants running and our bridges standing, to responding to more emergent events like flooding, tornadoes, and even global pandemic, these projects always felt so personal to me and I took them seriously. And even though my time in Congress is coming to an end, I stand here renewing that promise I made over a decade ago to leave this country a far better place than the one I inherited, not only for my son Christian, but also for future generations. In closing, I need to first thank God Almighty for his blessings. Without his guidance and protection, I would not be where I am today. I want to also thank the hundreds of thousands of Illinoisans who place their trust in me to represent them in this chamber. While we may not have always agreed on every issue, I always work to best represent my constituents of my nation. I certainly would not be the man I am today without my family. From my parents, Russ and Jody Kinzinger, to my wife and newborn son, Sophia and Christian, you have all lifted me in my time of need. While other, others fled, you stood your ground and you supported me through thick and thin. And for this, I am eternally grateful. And last but not least, I need to thank my staff, both past and present. Over my 12 years in Congress, I had the privilege of having dedicated young men and women who sacrificed long hours, weekends, and holidays, and special events in support of my goals. Without them, legislating would have been impossible. They serve on the front lines every day, prosecuting casework for my countless constituents, advancing my legislation, and taking the brunt of the vitriol from angry and lost individuals. Their work was never easy, and they never wavered. I'd like to especially thank my Chief of Staff, Austin Weatherford, my Deputy Chief of Staff and District Director, Bonnie Walsh, my Legislative Director, Sebastian DeLuca, my Deputy District Director, Patrick Doggett, my Policy Advisor, Paul Laurie, my Field Representatives and Caseworkers, Greg Reidenauer, Casey Gross, Luke Phelan, and Leah Bowman, my Communications Director, Teresa Reed, my Legislative Correspondent, Luke Sandlin, my Press Assistant, Emily Hayes, and my Staff Assistant, Anna Brooks-Reed. I was truly blessed to have such a dedicated staff to advise me through this whole process. They've become like family, and I will never forget the work they have done in service to me and into their nation. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time.